Well, I hope that the past video lecture has helped you with this, because what you hopefully realize is that anything that's true for the stationary rod and the moving source of B field must be exactly true for the conducting rod moving and the source of the B field stationary. So we need to think about U and Trogdor again. And if Trogdor is moving along this time with the source of the magnetic field, or equivalently moving along with the field, then from his point of view, the B field is stationary, but the conducting rod is moving. And now we know exactly what happens, because V cross B, you can use the right hand rule and confirm that the forces on positive charges in that conducting rod will be up, and so the top end of the rod will be positively charged. And so you must see that as well in your reference frame, even though the conducting rod is stationary in your frame. So the top end is positive. This may seem like a paradox, because we know that magnetic fields do not exert forces on stationary charges, and the charges inside that rod are most certainly stationary. So how is it that we here have a magnetic field that's apparently exerting forces on it? Well, the resolution is something we've already seen. We know that the interactions between objects can depend on your frame of reference. Two moving charges in the frame from which you see them as moving will have magnetic forces that they exert on each other. But in another frame where those two charges are stationary, you would, in, you would only see an electric force acting between them. But both observers have to agree on the overall forces. And so what appears to be an effect of magnetic forces to one observer can be an effect of electric forces to another observer. And so in your frame, where that stationary conducting rod feels no magnetic forces, you must interpret the fact that the charges in it feel forces as an outcome of electric forces. In other words, you see a result of an electric field. And so we need to conclude that a moving or changing magnetic field produces an electric field. This will eventually give us a way of explaining the currents that we see in conducting coils and loops in changing magnetic fields. So I promised that we would explain the directions of the induced currents in a coil when you're inserting or removing a magnet. So now it's time to do that. So here's the coil again, but I've set it up a little differently this time. This time, if you look, you can see a resistor here. So there is a wire with the resistor right here, and then the wire goes up around this way and into the coil and around. So if current runs counterclockwise this time in the coil, it's going to come out here and it's going to go through the resistor this way. And you can see the leads from this voltmeter now. I've connected a voltmeter across the resistor so that again if current flows this way through the resistor, which means it's going counterclockwise in the coil, that is what will show up as a positive voltage here. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before, putting either end of the magnet in or out with this new setup. And I'm not sure this new setup makes it any clearer what's happening, but I'm about to show you a very similar setup that should make it much clearer. I've got almost the same setup. You can see the resistor here, so here's the wire with the resistor. And I've once again set things up so that if current goes counterclockwise around the coil, then it comes out here and runs through the resistor in this direction. And that's going to be read as positive. But now, instead of a voltmeter, I've set it up with a voltage probe so we can see the voltage as a function of time. 
So now with this setup, here's the magnet again, and you can now tell when I put the north end of the magnet in, I get a positive voltage, and when I pull it out, I get a negative, and when I turn it around and put the south end in, I get a negative voltage, and when I pull it out, I get a positive voltage. Let's pick this all apart and see what's going on. So we need to think about magnetic interactions, and so we can think about the magnetic fields due to this magnet, but we can also, because we have currents running around in this coil, think about the magnetic fields that it's producing. So here I am, I'm sticking the north pole of the magnet in. Now the north pole of the magnet has a magnetic field out of it, and so that is pointing into the coil away from us. And as I put it into the coil, because the magnet is getting closer, that B field is getting stronger inside the coil. Well, that generated what we saw as a positive voltage, which meant current this way through the resistor, which meant counterclockwise current in the coil. And if you just do the right-hand rule for that coil, that means that the magnetic field that the coil produced as I stuck this magnet in was out towards us. Let's look at that again in the diagram. So here I am putting the north pole of the magnet into the coil. And the B field due to that north pole of the magnet points down. So there's a B field through the middle of the coil pointing down. And as I bring the magnet closer, then that B field inside the coil due to the magnet increases. And so there's a delta B pointing down. But the current that we observe in the coil is in the indicated direction in the diagram, and it produces what we would call an induced magnetic field, which is up out of the coil. In other words, it's in the opposite direction to this delta B. Here is the moment when I pulled the north pole of the magnet out. And so, again, there was a B field in due to the magnet, but it got weaker as I pulled the magnet out, and so there was a delta B in the opposite direction, right? You go from an initial large B field into the coil to a smaller one into the coil, so the delta B is this way. Well, if you look, that resulted in a negative voltage on our voltage probe, which is indicating a current this way through the resistor, which means the current was going clockwise in the coil. And if you do your right-hand rule, that means that the B field due to the coil is that way, in, away from us, opposing, again, this delta B. So, again, let's see this in the diagram. When you pull the North Pole out, then the B field that is pointing down through, the, down through the coil reduces in magnitude, and so there's a delta B which is up, and the current in the indicated direction produces an induced B field down in this case, so opposite the delta B again. So here is the moment of me putting the south pole in. So with the south pole, the B field points towards it, and so the field inside the coil due to this magnet is out of the screen towards us. And as I put the magnet in, that field gets stronger, and so we get a delta B also out towards us. Now if you look at the data, we see a negative voltage which corresponds to a current that way through the resistor, which means clockwise current in the coil, and the right-hand rule tells you then that the B field due to the coil, the induced B field, is into the screen away from us, again opposing the change in the B field. Hopefully this is starting to get familiar now, so once again with the diagram. There is a B field inside the coil due to the magnet, which is now up towards the magnet, because that's what we have from a south pole. And as we insert that south pole into the magnet, that B field is going to get stronger. And the current ends up being in a direction so that it produce, produces an induced B field opposite to that change in the B field due to the magnet.
It should come as no surprise then that as I pull the south pole out, we get a positive voltage indicating a current this way through the resistor, which means counterclockwise current in the coil. The right hand rule tells you that that means an induced B field out. Well, that makes sense because the B field due to the magnet inside the coil was out but it got weaker as we pulled the magnet out, and so the delta B was in, and so once again the induced B field is opposing the change in the B field. And so this final case, pulling the south pole out, looking at it in the diagram, again the B field due to the magnet inside the coil is up, but as you pull it out it gets weaker, and so that means there's a delta B which is down, and the induced B field that we can get from the direction of this current is up, so opposite the delta B. The other really crucial thing to notice is that when I hold the magnet still right next to the coil, there is no current in the coil. So it isn't the magnetic field of the magnet that causes a current in the coil, it's the change of that magnetic field. If I hold the magnet still, I get no induced current. And the other thing is, right at the beginning, as I was showing you the magnet, you can see that each time I rotate the magnet, you see a little bit of current in the coil, because me rotating the magnet is also changing the field inside the coil. So this is a lot of complexity, but there's one overall pattern. In every single one of these cases, the induced magnetic field, by which I mean the field produced by the induced current in the loop, is opposing the change in the magnetic field inside the loop. Now, we've seen though that what is important is the flux through the loop. One way to change the flux through the loop is to change the magnetic field through it, but there are other ways to change the flux through the loop, as we'll see. And so the law that we state out of this isn't stated in terms of fields, it's stated in terms of fluxes, and here it is, Lenz's law. The direction of the induced current is always such that the magnetic flux due to the induced current opposes the change in the magnetic flux through the loop. Clear? Probably not. This one takes a lot of practice to think through. We'll have plenty of time in class to practice using Lenz's law and that's probably the better place to do it. In the meantime, here's something related that you probably can think about. So here's one of the situations we just talked about. This magnet is being inserted into a conducting loop, and it's producing a downward B field inside that loop, which is getting stronger because of the magnet getting closer to the loop. And so there's an upward induced B field. Well, as a result, what is the direction of the force that the loop will exert on the magnet?